Thanks for tuning into this video. In the previous one, I created a frame for this deck and I'll link that down in the video description. So if you watched part one and you left a comment, thank you for your feedback. I do acknowledge some things could have been constructed better and for that I want to address a few of those before moving on to part two. Using joist hangers is the best way to connect the joists. They're easy to install and you can install them with nails or screws, which I prefer. Shorter screws were used to secure the joist hangers to the joist frame and a longer screw was driven at an angle through the joist and into the joist frame. To reinforce the corners, I added galvanized angles and screwed those in place. I also beefed up the connection to the post by adding galvanized carriage bolts. After drilling out the holes, I then used an anti-turn washer on the carriage bolt before putting those into the hole. I'll then secure the bolt by using a washer, lock washer, and a nut. As I tighten the nut, the anti-turn washer bites into the wood and prevent the bolt from spinning. Even with the deck being completed at this point, I can still get under the deck to every location and still improve the build quality. All of the lumber used in this project is ground contact pressure treated southern yellow pine timber. These are the same lumber I used for my fence post when I installed the fence eight years ago. And of course, it's easier to do it before adding all the deck boards and going through this trouble. Better late than never. Now those are the most concerning improvements, but it's time to get this deck on the road. In this video, we're gonna pick up where we left off and finish the deck. The substructure of the deck is made from two by eight pressure treated lumber. And for the decking, I'm gonna be using a composite material by Trex for a number of reasons. Unlike real wood, you don't have to spend days trying to upkeep it and also bring back its life. It's very low maintenance. You can get the decking in a few different lengths. So I designed the deck to be 16 foot and I also went with the 16 foot decking. This way I didn't have to have any joints. The first row of the deck is the most important row. Trex make these universal starter clips and these allow you to secure the outside edge of the first deck board. I am going for a super clean look here so I want hidden fasteners. Now one thing to keep in mind is if you're not going with the hidden fasteners then you shouldn't need the universal starter clips. The hidden fasteners have these little wings on them that sits within the groove of the deck boards. And using the included bit you can drive the screws down into the joist. One thing I learned along the way is it was best to drive the screws in about halfway and leave it just high enough so you can get the next deck board under the clip. At that point you can come back and tighten them up. The hidden fasteners will be placed at every joist. This will be a repetitive process doing this row by row until we meet the end. One thing I find helpful was to place a stop block at the beginning of each row as I'm attaching the deck boards. As I approach the angled section, I approach this the same way as I was previously on the deck. I just continue to work towards that and wherever the board hangs off, that's where it's going to get cut. With the majority of the angled piece attached, I then drew out a chalk line. I ended up cutting outside the line. This way I can play it safe and I can always use a sander to sand it down to the face board. I tried a jigsaw at first and that worked out okay, but a circular saw works out so much better. With the deck boards being trimmed down, I tried using a router, but that got a little difficult because I had to keep applying the clamp and removing it and adjusting along the way. So I decided to use a handsaw, which I felt a bit more comfortable with and I felt like I had more control. When securing the end board, I saw in the Trex manual that you can use a piece of wood underneath and attach it from below by running a screw at an angle up and into the deck board. That's an option I may keep in the back pocket and I can do that at any point, even after the deck is complete. This composite deck is proven to be pretty tough and durable. It's actually putting up more of a fight than the wood using the sander. Now this option was a bit more tedious, but I felt like using the belt sander was the best way to go here and it worked out pretty well. I used the 30 grit sandpaper on this and I'm pretty happy with the results. Cutting the deck boards at the top of the deck was pretty easy compared to what I have to do at the step. Now this was a little more challenging for me. I'm going to take this a different route. I'm gonna take a large piece of cardboard and cut out the shape of this section of the step. 
This was the only accurate solution that I could come up with at the time and I think it worked out pretty well. It just so happened that I had a shipment that came in right around this time. So even if you don't have a piece of cardboard this large, you can always tape a few together to come up with the same shape. I used the cardboard to determine how many pieces of deck board I was going to need to fill out the step. I laid out each deck board with the hidden fasteners so that it would be an exact replica. Then I placed the cardboard on it just so that it overlaps those areas and then I took a sharpie and marked along the cardboard. This way I can mark all of the deck boards I needed for this section. I then used a circular saw to cut along the line that was drawn out. And although you can use a guide to cut directly on the line, being perfect to the line is not as important because this cut will be covered by the fascia. Now with all the parts cut, you can double check and see how this lays out. From start to finish, there wasn't a complete day that I spent working on this deck. It consistently rained on and off. So even tackling the smallest thing on this deck was a challenge due to the weather. I didn't get a good shot installing the clips on the first row of the deck. So let's take a look here at what I did with the clips. I clamped on a piece of scrap wood here which allowed me to set the edge by placing the clip up against those and screwing those down. I lined up each clips with the joist. And once I completed that entire row I can then start to place the deck boards in place. And now I can begin the installation of the hidden fasteners on the inside of the deck board. I left the hidden fasteners loose so I can slide the second deck board in place. And if that looks good you can go ahead and screw down the fasteners. Now I purposely left the deck boards long, this way if I had any issues with the angled cut I can either push it down or adjust it any way I need to before making the final cut. I repeated the same process for the third deck board. Since the third deck board had a sharp angle on it, I couldn't reach both ends at one time, so I used a piece of lumber I had laying around to hold down the far end while I hammer in from one side. And it just caught my attention that the small piece that fits in this corner needed some support underneath, so I added a piece of 2x4 here, added the Trex deck tape, and screwed that in place. And with the 2x4 underneath, pressure treated of course, I was able to add a couple hidden fastener clips to hold down this small piece. I slid the small piece in place, then I cut it off with the handsaw. Right now I'm preparing to finish off the fascia and I want to make sure that I have all these boards secured as much as possible. Now if I'm going to go hidden fasteners, I'm going to do my best to try and go clean with miter corners. I used a 12 inch fascia which I ripped down on the table saw, slightly bigger than the total of the deck frame and the deck board. I sanded and cut down both ends of the deck board so that they're even with the deck frame. So I made this really quick jig that allowed me to drill all the holes at the same distance apart. The jig is set up to mark three holes at one time and also keeping it one inch from the edge. If I mark the back side with a pencil, I can move the jig and then drill the next set of holes. Now I didn't even go all the way through the fascia board, I just drilled slightly down so that I could mark it and then that was enough. Now I could have drilled all the fascia boards at one time, but I only drilled the one that I was planning to install at that particular time. Now I spoke to one of the reps over at Trex and Mel gave me some really good pointers to install in the fascia. Aside from the screws, he suggests adding a construction adhesive on the back side of the fascia. And he also put me onto this deck screw depth setter. And this allow you to set the perfect depth of the screw every single time. Now I did try this on a test piece and it worked out fine. And although the screws are going to be exposed on the fascia, it's super hard to even see them unless you get close up. Depending on the deck material you choose, they have the right screws to match that. The fascia board come in 12 foot sections, so I couldn't go the entire span of the 16 foot deck. So I had to extend them by monitoring the area where they met. When I cut the fascia for the front side of the deck, I made sure that the miter end was away from the step. My thinking here would be less busy and the miter joint would be away and not as noticeable.
To put the finishing touches on this, I added a small piece of miter piece along the back of the step. This way when you see it from a distance, it looks really good. One exciting part about this deck is being able to use it at nighttime. So of course adding lighting is a great way to improve visibility. I added masking tape in the approximate location so that it's easier to make a mark. I could have gotten away with two lights per step, but since the step was so long, I opted out for four. I measured and marked the location for each light on the lower riser. Since I had a laser, it made my life a bit easier, so I used that to carry the marking up to the upper riser. The lights were spaced in the middle of the riser and also spaced equally apart. After the marks were placed, I then drilled out a one inch hole. Now that I have the one inch hole in the fascia, I need to drill a second hole. This way I can pass the wire through the back of the step and land under the deck. The lighting setup here is pretty straightforward, but let's take a look at what I have. This is the one inch recessed deck light. You can connect the light to an adapter or a splitter like this one. You can then use an extension cable to extend the length of the light. If you have a setup like this one where the lights are close enough, you can then use a six way splitter. Just make sure you cap off the unused ports. The six way splitter would then connect to the light hub transformer cable and that cable would then connect to the transformer. And finally I plugged the outlet into a timer outlet which should all end up going into a GFCI outlet since this is an outdoor project. Here's a closer look at the one inch recess light that's going to be installed in the deck. After feeding the wire through the step I was able to grab the wire from the back and then bring that closer to the connection point. I repeated this for all eight of the lights and then I pushed the lights in from the front with the light bulb at the bottom. Now that I have all the wires in this location, I'm going to add them to splitters and mount the splitters onto one of the deck boards here. To wrap this up, I'm going to extend the wires to the back of the deck and strap them under. On the far end of the deck, on the back, I added a few pipes here years ago for Future Electric and this is a project that we're definitely going to need electric for. Adding electric here is a huge task on its own. For this phase of the project, I'm going to bring electric here by extension cord so I can fire these up and make sure everything works. Now I do plan to have two different types of light on the deck, obviously the deck lighting, but I'm also going to take some LED strips attach those together to extend around the perimeter of the deck. I also picked up these clips for additional support to the LED strip while they're installed. The LED strips are waterproof but the controller isn't. My plan is to install a junction box on the back side of the deck where I can put all these components in it that is not designed for direct water contact. This controller has an IR receiver which allow you to control it by remote but it also has built in Wi-Fi. This way you can control it by phone. I installed the LED strip going around the entire deck not including the step. And here's a quick visual of that along with the clip being installed to hold the LED in place. Also if you're taking on this challenge for the first time and you're new to LEDs be sure to cut the LED strip at the copper location. This was my first time working with composite decking. In fact, this is my first time building a deck. Before I committed to Trex decking, I did a good amount of research on wood versus composite material. Now you can compare the upfront cost versus the overtime maintenance and then decide which one makes the most sense for you. For me, it was a no brainer. I knew right away that I didn't want maintenance and I just didn't want the upkeep and the responsibility that comes along with a wood deck. Personally, I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds with the realistic wood color and also the texture. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the deck came out. It's always exciting when you can bring a design to life. I love the lights on the step, although I'm still trying to warm up to the lights going around the deck or maybe I just haven't found that color I like. I don't have a landscape design just yet, but whenever that time come, I'll be sure to share it with you guys along with an update on the deck. In the meantime, I'll be working on a documentation, the written article, plans, material list, the cost breakdown, so be sure to check back. I'll have links down in the video description or you could check out DIYCreators.com. Well, that is it for now. I'm Glenn on DIY Creators and I hope to catch you on the next one.